Hey guys, welcome back to the next video in the SkyMaster F18 build series. Um, if this is your first time here guys, or you haven't done so yet, you can support the channel by hitting that subscribe button down below. When you do hit the subscribe button, don't forget to hit the bell so you get notified when I release new videos. And additionally, to support the channel, give the video a thumbs up, it helps with the YouTube algorithm. Okay guys, so I've uh, put the initial hole in there for the uh, control surface um, rod. So we took that, the line, and we just transferred it down here and just use my Dremel to open that up. Now just uh, as a point for you, this is a carbon overlay of foam with carbon on the other side. So it's a laminated piece, so kind of neat, but actually really easy to get through. Now what we need to do is we need to cut the servo horn because it's currently too long, okay? So what we're gonna do is we would take the measurement, uh, the depth measurement, the back part of the wing is actually smaller than the front part of the wing. Um, so we've got about uh, 24 millimeters of depth if we take that shortest number. And uh, that's a measurement from the top part of the servo. So if we just take that measurement, we're basically looking at uh, cutting the servo horn roughly in the middle part of the D on the logo. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it a little bit long so we can play with it. So I'm going to cut it on the front edge of the D. And uh, then we'll insert the servo into the uh, slot and see how everything fits. And then our ball joint hole is actually going to be going right in that location where the F is on the, uh, on the logo. So right about there. But uh, anyways, we're going to cut that and I'll show you guys what it looks like. All right, guys. So there's the, uh, the final product. Uh, cut quite a bit off. Needed to go to the center of the D in order to uh, clear the skin. So I'll show you guys here. So anyways, that's uh, the servo horn installed. There's probably about uh, a two millimeter gap between the servo horn and the skin. So that's as, uh, as long as we could possibly go. And uh, that should give us enough room for our ball. So if we use one of those little uh, angled pieces that should work out good now we are using different servo horns than previous the previous ones um, were blue ones from JR so they're a little bit different but uh, either way we can make that work and uh, that's what we're looking at for spacing all right guys so you can see in there the uh, everything's nice and tight and uh, and set up I'll pull that apart so you can see what I did, but uh, basically we've got the uh, the bolt coming through the back of the servo arm, and uh, the ball link fits over top of the bolt. So let's dismantle that, and I'll show you exactly what uh, what's happening here. Okay, guys, so that's what I uh, what ended up happening here. So I I actually drilled out the uh, the servo horn, uh, threaded it with a, a tap, and uh, and threaded the um, the bolt through the back of the servo arm and um, that should be perfect so we we clear the uh, clear the servo casing there even if we got more movement out of it so that works good so that's uh, how we're gonna have that set up uh, the ball fits over top of there and there's just when this is in the the, the ball link is just touching the uh, the skin in the middle position. So we've pretty much maximized our our distance here that we can get. Uh, we couldn't go any further out without having to sand down the uh, the ball link. Um, so this is uh, the measurement that uh, on this particular plane is uh, pretty much perfect. So center to center, we are looking at uh, 12 millimeters. So that also matches up with the 12 millimeters on the uh, on the arm that we installed on the flap. So, so that's pretty much done, guys. Um, 
Now we need to wait for the flap to cure before we can hook this all up, but uh, that's a fairly big step that's completed and uh, we've got all the mathematics uh, sorted out with this one and it's going to be fairly easy to repeat on the other wing, of course, now that we've got all, all of this figured out. Now we do have to do the aileron um, surface and uh, that'll be kind of next. Uh, we need to figure out why that's binding so much, so we'll uh, take a look at that as well. All right, guys, so here's the uh, the servo horn that I made up. So this is the, the match to the first one that I made, and uh, it's just easy to, to whip these off once you have all the dimensions. So I will, uh, I'll show you what the dimensions are here. So center to center for the hole spacing, we're looking at about 12 and a half millimeters, and then total size of the actual servo arm to clear the skin, 22 and a half, 23 millimeters in that range. All right, guys, so I took the uh, leading edge uh, flap off. It's fairly straightforward. On the wing tip, there's this uh, uh, piano wire. You just pull that all the way out, and the, uh, the actual unit comes off fairly easy. So I just wanted to take a look at it, inspect it, and uh, just check and make sure everything's good. So that's what it looks like. And uh, pretty straightforward setup. Obviously, there's the uh, the arm, the bell crank arm, I think is what they call it, that uh, operates with the servo. So fairly straightforward. <clears throat> um, now, just working on the uh, the aileron servo, and basically what we need to do is now we need to sand out this area right here to allow the uh, control horn to. Um, to go beside this uh, hinge point. So looking on the inside of the of the wing, um, it looks like there is structure in there. If you look right in the middle of the screen, right in that spot right there, that lines up with the uh, the actual hinge. So it looks like there's good structure in there. I mean, obviously one of the concerns is if you're sanding down right here beside the uh, the hinge point, is that gonna weaken it? But if there's structure built into this area, then obviously it's gonna be fine and that's what Skymaster suggests. So uh, we're gonna do that with the Dremel and uh, we just need to make some clearance for the, uh, the uh, control ho uh, horn or control arm. And then we do need to mount this uh, this carbon piece in the actual aileron portion as well too, but I'm gonna do this first. And uh, my goal here is just to try and get it as tight as possible to the actual hinge point. All right guys, made the slot for the control arm in the wing itself. So um, again, this this piece of the, uh, the hinge is all supported by plywood. But the nice thing is that that angle of the uh, control arm uh, works really well with that indent works really well with the placement of that uh, of the carbon uh, hinge point or the 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 control surface there so I'll pull that out and I'll show you exactly what uh, what it looks like there's the positioning of the uh, the horn itself so the benefit of having the horn at that angle is uh, mechanically it, it's giving you a great um, angle with the servo and you're going to get a lot of force. Okay guys, so this is where the uh, the hinge point or the, the control arm is and I think it's going to work out best there. The reason for that is the servo arm comes at about an angle like this or the uh, the actuating arm. Okay, now if we were to flip that around it's pretty similar uh, both would probably work. I think though that um, having it facing the other direction brings the arm more like this. So you get more to that 90-90 um, servo angle or or angle point, I believe. So anyways, I'm, I'm going to go with that route. There's also lots of room on the, uh, the top skin and everything, and I think that's going to work out best. So I'm going to high saw this in place, and um, that's the next step for this wing. All right, guys, we've got a bit of a mix mash wires here. This is just a bundle of extra wires from the owner. Um, anyways, I'm just going to show you guys a couple things here. So first of all, the um, the aileron is all cured. Now we do have a bit of high saw that rolled out there. So I'm going to uh, to fill that little area in just so it's 100%. 
But uh, that's the, the aileron flap. Um, I'll give you guys these measurements here as well, but uh, that's what it looks like. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll throw, throw down some measurements. We've got them as well too on, uh, on video and, and some actual measurements, but it uh, gives you an idea what, uh, what it should look like. Okay, so we've got um, a couple things here. The first thing is routing the wires through this wing is an absolute pain. So I don't think there's, from what I can see, there's no direct channel from the outboard, um, the aileron flap, to this location uh, where my wires are coming out. So what I've done is I've uh, inserted my, just a piece of bendable wire coming this way into this section and uh, that allowed me to pull my uh, my thread or my uh, my piece of string in between these two sections and then I've got the uh, the servo line already run to this point here so that takes a little bit of a, a funky bend around there but uh, so that's the kind of the route you're gonna have to take in this wing if you're building an aircraft like this the other thing I did is just for the um, the actual outboard servo itself, uh, the best way to route this, because the servo is going to be sitting like that, um, the best way to route this that I can figure out is coming behind this block like this, and then we'll go down this channel and through. So anyways, that, uh, that's kind of what I've come up with. What I'm going to do is just get our servo line kind of uh, figured out for length here. So we're going to be using the um, the 12 pin uh, Thunderbolt. Uh, I can't remember the uh, the uh, brand name, but um, anyways, the, the 12 pin connectors on this wing and um, oh, sorry, the nine pin connectors on this wing. So we've got three servos. But uh, that's what's going to be happening. So all I need to do is I just need to, to find one of these uh, um, female wires or servo ends that uh, will work for this length. So once I get that done, I'm going to uh, connect the servo line to the uh, extension line. And we'll go get this uh, run through the wing. And then I'll show you the dimensions on the uh, the outboard aileron flap. Okay guys, so uh, uh, the dimensions here, just so you're aware how I'm measuring it, uh, I've showed you before on the other surface, but the dimensions from the flat to the uh, whole center is uh, 10.5 millimeters, and the dimension from the uh, surface to the uh, center of the hole is 8.5 millimeters. So anyways, that's what it looks like. Okay, so the line's been run for the uh, the servo line. Uh, it was just quite a pain to get through there, but we got it. And uh, anyways, there it is. So we're just going to end up cutting cutting these guys off and and putting them onto the uh, the wire connector. So, um, but that's all done. So what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to get the servo fastened down, and uh, just using the uh, the screws that came with the kit. So these are just uh, number four, I believe. Um, yeah, number four screws with the beveled head. Um, I need to pick up more of these because we don't have enough to do all the servos. So, But uh, these are the Phillips ones and then the ones we usually have here in Canada are the Robertson ones, which I like better anyways. But uh, this is just going into wood, so it's not a big deal. But this is the screws that we'll use to fasten down the servos. And... Um, then we'll get the uh, servo arms and everything linked up. And uh, I do need to still program this servo as well, so we'll need to do that in the radio. But uh, there's a little bit to do here with the wing, and I'll show you guys the steps as I go through it. All right, so what we need to do is we need to uh, get this servo programmed to be an aileron servo, so left aileron. And um, we're going to do that exactly the same way that we did the uh, the flap servo through the uh, the X bus menu. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Once that's done, then we can start to um, to install these two servos into the wing and get all the linkages and everything set up. Now we can't um, do the leading edge yet. Uh, the reason for that is we need a, a 
to get our order placed for some of the parts and we're looking for a short servo horn um, along with the rudder, rudder servo horns and things like that. So need to get that order placed so we can progress with these wings, but uh, we will be able to finish up the, uh, the primary surfaces, the aileron and flap. And um, so that's uh, what we're gonna progress towards here. So anyways, let's program that, uh, that servo. Okay guys, so I've gone into the XBus menu and I've changed the ID on this uh, servo to be a left aileron servo. So it's now working with the aileron. Now this is the point where I would like to set up the surface um, travel, servo reverses, things like that, just so the, the primary portion of it's done. And also we're, we're doing it in the XBus menu, so this is, in my mind, the right time to do it. So um, Now when we did the flap earlier in, the, in one of the previous videos, the direction didn't really matter because we were using the pluses and the minuses on the, on the flap menu. It will matter when we do the other wing, but uh, on this surface, it does matter. So when you put the aileron when the surface is on here, now this is a left wing and right now it's upside down. So if I was to give it left aileron, that surface should move up towards the sky, right? So in this case, it's gonna move this way is what we're looking for. And uh, right now, when I give it left aileron, that servo is moving the wrong direction. It would pull the surface this way, okay? So what we do need to reverse that servo. So it's extremely easy in the XBus menu. You just go into the menu, hit reverse, and now, when we do left aileron, it's moving the correct direction to, to make that uh, surface act the proper way. Now you want to hit set, so it saves the program. Now the other thing you can do right now too is you can center out the, uh, the, um, the servos. Now that servo and the horn combo is perfectly in line, but uh, if you did want to adjust it, you can adjust the range. So when it's at four, on these servos, it's extremely small adjustment ranges, so it, it actually works really good on four, but you can drop it to one or increase it. And um, I mean, one is, is just minuscule amounts of movement, so you can get those surfaces perfectly either matched to each other or perfectly centered. So, um, so that's all done. And um, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna work on installing those servos. All right, guys, so like normal, I will sound like a broken record, but uh, don't forget your Loctite. Extremely important. All right, guys, so I forgot about the uh, the linkage um, reversing the surface. So now if I, I push left aileron with this hooked up, it actually does the reverse. Now these ailerons don't move up. Okay, so they're only moving down. Um, so left aileron should should uh, go the opposite direction. So we're going to reverse that servo again. Now I'll show you how this works. So if you are having to change anything on an existing servo, um, that servo is plugged into the receiver right now. And uh, what we need to do is you don't go into the ID change. I think I've shown this before, but what you do is you go into the actual um, surface. So left aileron. Right, so we're here, and then when we go into this screen, now we're modifying this channel, right? So left aileron, uh, sub-channel number one. So we're gonna go back to normal on that servo. And now, I'm not giving this any movement, be or hardly any movement, because the surface doesn't uh, move upwards, but now when I go left aileron, we are moving the right direction. Okay, so now I need to center this uh, servo a little bit because it's not centered. Okay, so now that's set up. So the reason I'm doing all this is um, I'm just trying to get the, uh, the linkage arm set up to the correct length. So the reason I'm doing that is, um, so on the, the ball link side, um, that's nice and snug. On the, uh, the golden clevis side, we're going to be using Loctite on that. You can also use CA as well too, both work. I like Loctite because it uh, kind of expands and fills all the uh, all the voids. Now the threads on these titanium uh, linkages are actually, they're a more aggressive thread than what you find on the standard, uh, standard stock Skymaster ones. So these are good for going into the golden clevises, they're nice and snug. But um, for the uh, the plastic, if you're using the the metric plastic uh, Dubro 
ball joints. Um, this doesn't really create good threads in there. On the Imperial ones, it does. Hopefully that all makes sense. All right, so put a bit of Loctite on there. <clears throat> what we'll do is thread this in. Actually, just for giggles, we'll put some in there. You can actually already feeling it, uh, already feel it doing its thing. Okay, so now what we're doing is we're just going to thread this in. And we've got half turns to adjust if needed until we're at the center of that ball. So we're close. Going to go in a half a turn. Now there is some play, if you can see that, in the actual, um, just because I haven't snugged this up. So once I get close, what I'll do is I will tighten this, uh, tighten this bolt up, just so there's no play, and then we can feel what it feels like. So that's nice and good. So now, basically this, this surface is all centered. I don't need to do anything to the surface other than programming it, right? So we've got... So now I'm doing right aileron, and that surface comes down. Now we don't want any travel going in the opposite direction. So what I want to do with this surface is I want to uh, get rid of the uh, the travel in the other direction because it will never that surface will never move in uh, in the upward direction. So we'll go to travel adjust. We've got left aileron. Now I know that I can go this direction. That just tells me which one is which. I can't go the other direction. There we go. Okay, so now I've got no surface travel in that direction. And then in this direction, I can increase it. Now, if you take the surface, it can actually go too far where this little tab will unhook from the uh, the surface. So for now, so that's 100% travel. So we'll just keep it there, I think. And that's what it looks like. So we can always add more if required, but um, We'll have to pair that up with the flap and see, but that looks pretty darn good. And uh, so our travel set up. So now when I go left aileron, nothing happens, right? So there's no risk of us um, adding anything in any mixes or anything like that going the other direction because we're going to set these up. Um, we're going to set these surfaces up. So when flaps go on, these come down and work as flaps but um, they also work with the tailorons as well too. So they're paired up together. So anyways, this surface is, is essentially done. Um, this bolt, I'm not gonna uh, do anything with that right now because I need to, to, um, to get the cover plate on. I need to get the, the, um, the fairing piece, I, I don't know what these are called. The fairing piece installed. There's lots to do on this before I, I actually bolt that up. So, and yes, I know I'm missing two screws here. That's on purpose. I need to, haven't had time to stop at the hardware store to grab um, some number four, three quarter inch screws because they didn't uh, ship enough with the kit. So, um, before you put these screws into the wood, you want to put some CA in there. I have pre-drilled those holes with... Uh, 
a small drill bit. I think it's an eighth, eighth inch drill bit. And um, yeah, so this surface is basically done. I do need to put the official bolts in here, cut those off, lock tight them, all that kind of stuff. But uh, the servo is effectively installed on that side. So now we're going to uh, move on to the main flap and um, work on this one. All right, guys, we've run into a bit of an issue here, and I guess it's kind of good because uh, I make mistakes too, and, and crap happens, so you need to be able to deal with it when it happens. So basically, um, I think the number, I don't have my phone with me, so I can't look it up, but I think the number is 12 millimeters from the flat. So if you see there, that's about the flat. So I think what happened is our, uh, our horn sank down when uh, the glue was setting. Now, that's quite disappointing because this doesn't work with the wing setup. So, it doesn't work for a couple reasons. So when this is inserted, and I've actually, you can see, hopefully you can see, I've taken my Dremel and ground down this area right here just so it clears, but this is so tight to the uh, the underside of the skin that um, I could make it work. Problem is the geometry is not uh, geometry is all off. So when this goes in, you can kind of see there it would be tight to the top. We need that pivot point or the the clevis mounting point on the carbon. We need it to be down as far as possible, just for geometry on this. Uh, the servo so if it's up high and that that line from the servo the control rod is coming like this it just doesn't make any sense so what I'm gonna have to do is cut this guy out and um, redo it so it's a bit of a pain but uh, it's what needs to happen so the easiest way to to deal with this that I found because I've had to do this before is uh, I mean here's the this is the uh, surface that's in there so we need to do a fair bit of uh, grinding but uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this off and then I'm just going to use my Dremel bit that I showed you guys in in the previous part of this video or in my other videos and basically just grind that out and allow a space just like we did before for this to go in obviously we need it to be at a at a angle like that not down so Anyways, guys, that uh, is going to be the end of this video. Um, so in the next video, I'll show you the, uh, the results of this. And um, then we'll continue on with the wing. So this is one of those things that you really don't want to monkey around with. And again, I could make this work. And it would probably be workable. But the geometry is all wrong. And uh, it's just not the right way to do things. So if you ever run into an encounter like this or a situation like this, just fix it don't uh you know especially on a on a plane of this cost but really any aircraft fix it properly do it properly and uh, you'll be better off and happier with the results so so that's the end of this video guys thank you so much for tuning in to this uh, skymaster f18 build video series uh, if you want to support the channel or if you haven't done so already don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below uh, also give the video a thumbs up guys and um, when you do hit that subscribe button don't forget to hit the bell so you get notified when I release new videos that's it guys if you have any questions post it down below you can send me an email as well too but have a great day and we'll see you in the next video